Welcome. We're going to be, uh, for the Numenera 2 Kickstarter, we are going to be doing, uh, I think, a series of uh, glimmers from the data sphere. We're going to be having little conversations with uh, different members of the creative team and uh, the rest of the Monte Cook Games team to uh, talk to you guys and answer questions about uh, things that you're curious about, to um, kind of give you guys inside looks our, you know, what our thought processes are, uh, what some of the cool, um, you know, behind the scenes stuff you might not know about uh, would be. So uh, thank you for joining us for our very first one. Uh, so I, yeah, <laughs> what, did you want to say hey? <laughs> I was just saying, so save all your hard questions for later. Um, yeah, hi everybody, uh, I'm Monty Cook, uh, one of the owners of Monty Cook Games, and uh, we are really, really pleased to be here today with this Kickstarter. Uh, we're thrilled with how well everything is going and uh, how many backers we have so far. That's always really exciting and uh, we're, we're happy to be talking to you today. Uh, did we lose Darcy? And she's back. I have to uh, refresh or the Q&A doesn't refresh, so we don't get our new questions. So that's a really cool feature. Um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, well, hopefully the audio quality is solid for all of you, and why don't we jump into some questions? Sure. Um, so uh, one of the, the highest voted questions for the Q&A, sort of a warm-up, would be uh, asking about your taste buds. So, uh, Monty, do you like hot peppers? <laughs> And uh, what is the hottest food you have ever eaten? Um, I, I like some kinds of peppers. Uh, I like hot peppers much more than I like like sweet peppers. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the hottest food that I've ever eaten was at Gen Con oh. a long time ago, probably like 20 years ago. Uh, when Gen Con was in Milwaukee, there was this uh, Thai place called The King and I that would serve this dish called Volcano Chicken uh, and if you got it as spicy as they would make it, it was the kind of dish where you would, I, I was just sweating. I was crying. It oh was so gosh. hot, but it was so good, right? Because hot foods make your endorphins, uh, increase your endorphin rush. And so, you know, it was pleasurable and painful at the same time. In Indianapolis. That's impressive. Uh, Milwaukee. Oh, in Milwaukee, in Milwaukee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also not known for its epicenter of, of hot, uh, flavorful dishes, but hey, we'll take it. That's awesome. Um, cool. So why don't we dive? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> so I think there's a lot of questions about, you know, it's it's day three of the Kickstarter. Is that right? Gosh. That's right. So there's lots of questions, but uh, I think it might help uh, answer a couple of the questions that were down there to talk about what kind of changes are coming for Discovery. So that's the book that's going to be our uh, our replacement for the existing Numenera core book, but there are some changes coming too. So um, would you be interested in talking about some of those? Sure. So one of the things that probably doesn't seem clear at first, uh, but but if you are a Numenera player and you think about it, it will make a lot of sense. And that is, we can change a lot about the characters without changing at all how the his system works. Um, we can, uh, you know, we're not, we're not, it's, you know, when I think of like a new addition to the game, that would be like if we decided to use a percentile system or we completely mm -hmm. changed the way uh, difficulty levels worked or something. We're not touching any of that, right? You are still resolving tasks exactly the same. You are NPCs work exactly the same. Items work exactly the same. What we're changing um, is primarily the character stuff. And we can, if you look at it this way, right? Like with Character Options 2, a book that came out about a year ago or more now, um, we, we added the Glint and the Seeker, brand new types. Mm -hmm. But we were able to do that and give them all kinds of new abilities and whatever. And it didn't affect the way the game worked. It didn't affect the way Jax worked, right? Uh, didn't affect anything like that. Well, in, in that same way, we can change the way the Jack works or we can change the way a Glaive works mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't change the rest of the system. So that when we say that the game is going to be compatible with all the previous material, that's what we mean, right? It's 
there is this luxury with the way that the cipher system happens to work is that it, everything, it isn't a house of cards kind of design where you, uh, you know, you, you, you push one card and the whole mm -hmm. thing comes crumbling down, right? Not every piece is relying on, an, on every other piece, which isn't true of every game. It just happens to be the way the cipher system works. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, can, we can do things like, uh, you know, we've gotten a lot of feedback over the years that says, you know, the jack isn't as interesting as the jack could be because he's really just a mixture of what the nano and the glaive can do. And that was the point of the jack. But but Jack lovers and I I love Jacks too right wanted Hashtag Jack lovers yeah <laughs> exactly right <laughs> um, you know they wanted unique abilities for the Jack and mm -hmm. we heard you and so uh, the Jack is going to see a big major overhaul with lots of brand new unique abilities for example we also heard you say that the glaive wasn't as interesting as it could be particularly at higher tiers right. Mm -hmm. Easy, easy to fix. Um, the other thing that we can do with some of this stuff is we can focus uh, even more on aspects of the game that don't have to do with just straightforward kind of adventuring or combat or things like that. But you know, that we can we can give the Jack a bunch of interesting interaction abilities, for example, um, and and play up that aspect of the game more just by making changes to the Jack, but not making changes to how interactions work, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's where you're going to see the vast majority of the changes in Discovery from the original Numenera core book. Now, again, the cool thing about it is is that the you could you could literally have an old Jack and a new Jack. Uh, there's a movie yeah. in there somewhere. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a buddy cop, yeah. <laughs> you could have them playing in the same game, um, and they would totally work together, right? It's just that they would have different options. Uh, but beyond that, uh, you know, really quickly, uh, we might do things. We're almost certainly going to put like all new adventures in Discovery. So if you've played through the adventures in the Numenera core book, you're going to get a bunch of new adventures in Discovery. Uh, you know, things like that. We're going to update the setting to reflect uh, in a small way. We're, we don't want to, you know, take all of Ninth World Guidebook and port it into Discovery, right. but, but we want to at least acknowledge that that stuff that got brought up in, in Ninth World Guidebook is also mentioned in Discovery. Oh, that's super cool. Um, I, I can't recall whether uh, you've talked about this yet, but I know that some people have been asking, you know, we've come out with some Numenera fiction now, a whole bunch of short stories. There's the Poison Eater. Um, there's the Nightclave that's still coming out. Are you thinking about working some of those locations into the setting too? Or are you going to try to mesh that together? Uh, we are almost certainly going to take some of like the locations and the creatures and stuff like that and work them into Numenera. Cool. Um, yeah, because there's some really neat stuff. Really uh, the cool creatures. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, yeah. Um, I guess one question other people were asking about too is, and I, I think you spoke to it here, but like the 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 magnitude of the compatibility between, um, you know, the the existing Numenera character options and uh, you know discovery. So and but it, the way that you've described it before, it sounds like you can really mix and match. Like you can take a focus from you know, there's no reason you can't have a totally hodgepodge grab bag of where you grab your descriptor type and focus, right? There's nothing fundamental that will make those not mesh, or, or are there going to be some exceptions to that? Uh, no, they will mesh, uh, but here's where, here's where you're, I mean, I don't want to give you the sales pitch, but, but <laughs> here's where discovery is going to be cooler than the core book. Right. Uh, and like one of the ways is, is in the foci, the focuses. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's going to be that, uh, one, again, we're responding to what people say that they would like. And one mm -hmm. of the things that people have said to me over the years is I like the character creation choices, but then once I make those choices, I'm kind of locked in. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't make any more choices about my character. So one of the things that we're probably almost certainly going to do is make it so that your focus doesn't provide you necessarily with just one ability every tier, but it might give you a choice, maybe just mm -hmm. like at third tier and sixth tier or, or, or some other con configuration like that. You get a choice, and so you can further customize your character so that, uh, you know, maybe there's ways, like if, you're, if your focus is... Uh, 
uh, bears a halo of fire, but you want, you like the, you know, you really like to burn things, right? You can focus <laughs> more on that. But if you want instead to be able to more shape fire or create a wall of fire or something like that, you'd be able to do that instead. Awesome. Uh, I think that's kind of a theme of this Kickstarter, right, is, is more options, uh, yes. you know, trying to embrace more kinds of play that we saw was already happening, you know, at Numenera tables and support that. Exactly. Um, so, so to get back to the compatibility thing, which I realized I totally skipped, oh, um, <laughs> you're going to, uh, uh, you know, you'll, you'll find that you will be able to use an old focus from an older book, but the newer ones They'll be balanced perfectly fine, but but the newer ones will have cooler options, right? They'll have more options. You'll have choices. Mm -hmm. um, so speaking to that, some people have been asking about um, supporting kinds of play that are less combat focused and more exploratory. And I, I think a lot of that, you know, is really resonating in the, the Destiny book. So do you want to talk about um, maybe a little bit about the, like what what characters are now going to be what players are going to be able to do with Destiny Book? The Des like what? What does that sure. bring to the table? Absolutely. Um, so the there's three new types in the Destiny Book, and what they each do is they embrace sort of the new play experiences that we want to try to get across with this book, and those include things like not just exploring, although that's a big part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but taking what you find when you explore and doing interesting things with it, right? So, for example, uh, I, I, I don't want to get, I, want, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. We're going to, we're going to reveal a lot of this cool stuff mm -hmm. as the campaign goes on. Look for cool updates that provide you with a lot more information about this material. But, for example, there is a type that is all about crafting and making things. And that could mean like crafting an artifact or a cipher out of the parts and things that you find. But it also might mean something much bigger scale than that, right? Like if you've got a, a community that you're a part of, maybe like, like say Elamir, right? Which we've introduced yeah. in this campaign. You might, if you're a, a character that has these uh, abilities, you would be able to make something that could help the whole community, right? And that could be something as sort of prosaic as, as a, a water purifier, but it could be something as dramatic as a tower that shoots lightning out of it if enemies come by. Um, and so, you know, it's Numenera, so it can get pretty yeah. weird, right? Um, and uh, going along that theme, right, there's the characters who will have abilities that will even focus more on community building and mm -hmm. organizing and uh, bringing people together, uh, helping foster that kind of thing, um, you know, uh, uh, diplomatic sorts of things so that you can uh, establish uh, relationships between different uh, communities and, and whatnot. Uh, and, and then, you know, we, we just sort of need also characters who have skills with tinkering and finding the stuff and scavenging all the right pieces because what we're going to do in Destiny is we're going to break down uh, in very specific ways all the weird stuff that you can find in Numenera Ruins and stuff like that and and then all the and then present you with like all these plans to take various bits and pieces and make cool stuff out of it. Uh, and, and so we need someone who kind of understands all of that and can, knows where to find it and uh, you know can make new plans that kind of thing excellent um so let's see we've okay we've we, i feel like a lot of people probably have a lot of specific questions about sure. all, everything you just said but we'll be digging in deeper as we go and we want to keep this one as a touch on a lot of different topics okay um would we be okay talking a little bit more about um elomir and kind of sure. how so this is a really new approach to interacting with people over the course of a Kickstarter, which are usually big, exciting to do's, but this is already generating tons of fiction. So do you want to talk about um, how it's going so far and what people can expect to see um, in the coming days? You know, uh, yeah, uh, I think it's going great so far. I'm thrilled with the, in, uh, the interaction that we're getting with people. You know, a lot of this just comes out of uh, the fact that like most of the time when I go to a convention, I go to Gen Con or something like that, I run a game and that game has six players in it. But mm -hmm. my dream has always been, what if I could run a game that 
everyone, every Numenera player who wanted to be a part of it could be a part of it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what Elamir is. Elamir is like MCG, mm -hmm. I, or, you know, however you want to look at it. Uh, we are the GM and everyone gets to be the player and so the way yeah. that there are different ways that you can as a player in this game uh interact and help elamir we're hoping uh in the true destiny fashion even just watching what happens to elamir is going to give you insights into destiny because you're going to see in true destiny mm -hmm. fashion elamir hopefully if all things go well uh elamir will you know flourish and grow and overcome challenges uh and you know fight off enemies and, and other dangers and grow and prosper into a, into a big, maybe even a big city. Um, and so we're excited about that. And one of the ways that people can do that, is, to, can interact with that, is by describing a, a scene a vignette from what their character might be doing, uh, you know, or, or just how their character interacts in Elamir or what their character is doing in Elamir. Uh, and I think that that is, we're already getting a great response. That's really fun. And, you know, uh, we have a, I, I see them on Twitter all the time, right? We, we have a lot of people who play Numenera who are, uh, great at drawing their character yeah. um, and, and great with that kind of thing. If that's the way people want to participate, if that's your creative outlet, that also works, right? And that also uh, will contribute to, to, the, to the whole Elamir uh, situation. So uh, check out today's update yeah. um, and uh, uh, find out how we're going to save Elamir from this first big threat, which is uh, a Marger invasion mm -hmm. of humans. Nasty, great people. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, we've been seeing some great fiction, so keep that coming too. And uh, and I think if we get a couple of really standout epic pieces of uh, fiction or art or creativity, um, that will also contribute toward the defenses of Elamir. It's probably worth mentioning too that uh, many of you have probably seen on the Kickstarter, we are going to be releasing a, an exclusive book uh, that is, uh, it's, it's going to be called The Trilling Shard because Elamir is this town built around this weird, mysterious Numenera artifact, the Trilling Shard. And uh, this book, uh, you know, we're going to be uh, making it possible for people to contribute characters to this book. We're going to be making it so that you can, you know, some of these vignettes, if they're, if they're just really amazing, we'll contact you and find out if you'd be willing to, you know, contribute that vignette to the book. Um, and, and, but even more than just that, what happens over the course of the next month or so of this of this Kickstarter campaign is going to shape what happens in that book. You know, hopefully that book will detail the growth of Elamir and what happens, and, and but it will be a fully playable source book, right? You'll be able to use Elamir in your campaign, all the NPCs in there and the challenges and everything will all be, you know, adventures, all be a big part of what you can do in your own Numenera campaign. Mm -hmm. So you can take what happens here and take it to your game table. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, some of the things I've heard from people are that, uh, you know, some, some people really crave a, a few more, like, nicely written up NPCs. And I think this whole Elamir thing is, you know, they're getting it from, from the Kickstarter updates. They're getting it from crowdsourcing the fans. So I'm excited for kind of the shared creative product we're all making together, regardless of what goes in the supplement, too. So that's awesome. And, yeah, people should be following that uh, closely. I love how it embraces what is the best thing about RPGs, right? Which is a shared creative experience, right? Everyone gets to contribute uh, their own creativity. I, I love that. Uh, absolutely. And uh, uh, for, for some of you, you may be returning Numenera fans and some of you might be newer, but the, the community, like the personal community at large of Numenera is really what drew me deeper into role-playing games. So I think it's also really cool to have this banding together with a community that's also been so cool for so many years, you know, five years of really, really good interactions. Um, so, but uh, rather than letting Darcy reminisce backwards, why don't we <laughs> talk forwards uh, as sort of a last question. Um, people have a lot of curiosity about what's coming next in the Kickstarter, what stretch goals might be happening, what new announcements might happen. Uh, what can you kind of tell us about um, and one specific question, I don't know if this is how you want to approach it, would be what would be your like shot in the dark, totally, you know, pie in the sky thing you would want to do? The, the, the let's make a movie version, you know, from the original <laughs> Numenera. 
So right, yeah. Well, if you've if you've been with us since the beginning, yeah, you remember the movie thing, which you know we we did, right? Yeah. I, I I love Numenera Strand. It's a very cool little film. Um. Uh, so boy, I don't know what my pie in the sky thing would be at, at this point. At at this point, you know, in so many ways, Numenera Two was sort of my pie in the sky, right? I mean, taking the game into a new realm and giving new play experiences. And I know that sounds like a cop out answer, but it's true. Um, you know, this is something that I've been thinking about for a long time, and and you know, I. We listen when when fans say, "Hey, this is something I wish was true about Numenera," or "Here's here's the way we played Numenera," um, and so I, I I have internalized all of that, I think, and 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 want to make that a bigger part of the game. I want to share some of those play experiences with everybody uh, that involve you know, building a community and, and, and really building a world, right? Making the ninth world a better place, which I always kind of wanted to be a part of Numenera, but uh, now is the opportunity to do that. But as far as stretch goals go, um, you know, again, if you've been around and you've been through uh, some MCG Kickstarters before, you know how things work, right? We, we unlock a bunch of, if things go well, and they often do, uh, we unlock a lot of really cool new books and we have already unlocked cool new books in this one and it's only day three. There are 30 some days yet to go. Uh, there's a lot, we have a lot of great ideas and, you know, make us do more books is really what we're doing. And, you know, in fact, maybe you'll have noticed that we have been trying to do things with our stretch goals. Maybe you haven't cause we have, you know, it's only been three days, but, I'll, I will tell you that our plan with this uh, is to make it so that uh, our stretch goals this time are always going to be things that make the game a cooler experience for the most number of people. Mm -hmm. So it's like add a brand new book, right? That everyone who backs it at a level where you get all the books gets it, right? Or or at least has the opportunity to get it at some point if they uh, if they're not backing it at that level yet. Um, or, you know, upgrade a book, upgrade the slipcase, which we already did, right? Um, and so uh, all of the stretch goals are these big meaty things that we, we think will, will make the whole game line a better thing. So you can imagine, I mean, we've already unlocked uh, Building Tomorrow and uh, Slaves of the Machine God, which uh, are two really cool uh, big hardcover books that we're going to release. Um, you know, uh, people love Numenera creatures. Uh, it's quite possible there could be another bestiary or something like it, right? Uh, there's always room for more adventures. There's, um, mm -hmm. And then there's parts of the Ninth World that we haven't really delved into, like... Um, you know, eon priests uh, get talked a lot about, but but you know, there's probably a lot more that we could learn about them. What if, what if you want to become one, right? What if you uh, uh, want to learn more from them? What kind of things can they teach you? Uh, so there's a lot of room for some new fun stretch goals, and and uh, you know, like I said, most of the stretch goals that we have planned are are these kinds of big significant steps. Uh, rather than, you know, lots of little fiddly bits that, um, you know, people, some people like, some people don't, that kind of thing. Awesome. And, you know, uh, with the slipcase upgrade, you know, we, we kind of added a bunch of fiddly bits to that, right? We're like, oh, you get a reference sheet and all this stuff. So I think we're trying to, you know, the, like, you know, I, I like the, it's a real departure from the past Kickstarters, but I think I like the excitement of one really big new thing that you know, upgrades everything in, in a lot of levels. So uh, hopefully you guys are as excited as we are. Uh, uh, we're really pleased with all um, the reception we've gotten so far. And thank you so much for showing up to this chat. Uh, I hope this has given you some exciting things to think about. I see the chat going wild with some of the things you just said, <laughs> Monty. So uh, <laughs> started a, uh, something going there. Um, well, uh, I think this is a lot for people to chew on. So why don't we uh, end this here and we'll have more chats in the future. And please let us know how you thought it went and what you want to hear more about in the future. Thank you. Monica. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks to everyone watching. It's awesome. <laughs>